Hello, so I've had lots of questions regarding radiation and sort of surviving nukes again and things like that. So I'm going to do another little video on it, and this one is more going to be about fallout, I guess. So what happens if you come into contact with fallout and what should you do? Now, remember, a lot of this is theoretical, and I'm not an expert on it anyway. So what you should do is a lot of your own research as well. And I'll say another thank you to Ziggy Jinx for sending me this Geiger counter, which is actually very practical and useful for these videos. This is one of those little SOX ones. Um, you can get these, I think, for around £100. Now, these are great if you want a little tiny um, Geiger counter that can read alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, because lots of the old retro Geiger counters, they look a lot cooler than this, but they're very bulky and heavy, and they can't always read alpha radiation unless they've got the right kind of probe or wand on them. This thing can read alpha radiation, so it's a lot more practical, because alpha radiation is going to be something you want to pay uh, close attention to in the event of fallout, nuclear war, or dirty bombs, and things like that, radiation links. So, I'll quickly go over the three, time, three types of ionizing radiation for this video, if you're not familiar with them. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha radiation can't really penetrate your skin, but it's risky if you ingest it or inhale it. So, how it gets into your body, typically, is it's irradiated dust, that's alpha radiation. You then inhale that dust, and it does a lot of damage inside your body. Then there's beta radiation, it can cause things to your skin called beta burns, um, but from what I understand it's not all that harmful. If you're wearing very thick clothing, from what I've read, that will stop beta radiation, but it's one of those things you may or may not be able to block, depending on how thick your clothing actually is. Then you've got gamma radiation, which is scary because you need lead or thick concrete or lots and lots of earth to stop gamma radiation, and it's the type of radiation that shoots through you um, and damages your cells that way. That's the thing that's famous when there's like a power plant leak, there's normally lots of gamma radiation. Now, a dosimeter like this or a Geiger counter will show you for the three types, and just because I know I'm going to get the people that moan about the difference between Geiger counters and dosimeters, Geiger counters read the current dose of radiation, dosimeters tally up the dose. This does both. It works as a Geiger counter to read how much radiation is coming in, and it can show you your total dose. So if I refer to it as a dosimeter or Geiger counter, both are correct just for the people that like to on purposely get upset about that. So, if you're blocking radiation, all you need is a particulate filter, the reason being irradiated dust is stuck in the particle filter, anything else like the gamma rays you can't actually block unless you're behind a hell of a lot of lead shielding. So, if you're outside in the radiation, uh, what you're going to need on is a mask, either a half face mask or a full face, ma full face mask, your preference with a P3 rated filter in it, and that's obviously going to block the dust from being inhaled that would do serious damage to you if it gets inside your body. Then for the gamma radiation, obviously, you'll just want to get, want to get behind as many layers as possible if that's even going to block it. For the most part, I don't think you should worry too much about gamma radiation, because if there's a big dose, you need to either get out of the area or, you know, that's it, basically. So I wouldn't tend to worry about it too much in that regard. But... Alpha radiation is what you're kind of going to be wanting to be concerned about, especially if it comes to fallout, because this seems to be where I get a lot of these questions. So, what you want is a device like this, so you can actually check if alpha radiation is getting in anywhere. Now, if you're going out and there was fallout dust everywhere, what you're going to want to do is suit up with some sort of dust suit on, and it could be really any sort of boiler suit type thing that you can take off easily. And you're essentially going to want to have a clean room, which is ideally going to be the first room in your house or a porch or something like that. And the idea is that you can have the mask on and the suit, you can put them on in your porch or whatever in your clean room, go outside, when you come back in, strip all that top layer off inside the clean room so you can enter your house without bringing radiation. Now, as I was saying, this is obviously something you need, because as radiation is invisible and tasteless and everything else, you're going to need to have one of these to find out if you're actually being exposed to it. So obviously, just to demonstrate that this does actually work, Here's an old radium dial watch, so we'll put this onto it, and you can hear it's ticking faster, and that's alpha radiation it's picking up through the glass. It's not a particularly high dose, because it's a very old World War II German watch, but the point is that, obviously, a counter like this can pick up alpha radiation. So the faster that starts ticking, and you can use little graphs on it, you know that you're obviously being exposed to something you don't want to be exposed to. So, as far as all that's concerned, these are very, very practical. You know, really practical, because you need to know if there's radiation coming in. 
you can't sort of simply assume there is or there isn't if it's something as dodgy as radiation that you can't otherwise tell. So this would be basically my advice to you, would be to get a Geiger counter that's preferably one of the small types that you can put batteries in that are easy to get. This is just triple A's and you can charge it from an electrical socket, assuming you still have electricity. I'm not going to go in this video either into all the theoreticals of an EMP and something like that, because that's people things people like to argue with. I you know, argue about endlessly and going, well, this is, your Geiger count would be useless because there would be an EMP. Well, not necessarily. Would the EMP even knock out the Geiger counter? If you have the Geiger counter without batteries in, you know, and then there's an EMP. If you put the batteries in, would it still work? Who knows? Had you got it in a shielded box or a Faraday cage, who knows? Let's not argue about that in this video because that's not what the video is about. There's plenty of other sources of radiation other than nuclear bombs. So... Assuming that, yeah, you had that, what you would want to obviously do is have sort of sheets, of plastic sort of sheets over your windows of the house. Preferably have a room deeper into the house where you'd have all your food stockpiled. If you had a basement, that would obviously be the best place. And make sure to use your clean room every time you go in and out of the house, because what you don't want to do is take in the radioactive dust on your clothes and expose people to it into the house that way. But that's why this is good, because you can find out if there's radiation somewhere well as you know might be radiation coming in so there you go hopefully that's explained some of the things maybe I hadn't explained before regarding radiation but obviously in the Fred's type everybody's a nuke scenario I don't think you really want to worry too much about how you're going to survive after the bomb because you probably won't but at least in terms of this yes you can check for alpha radiation other radiation sources with a Geiger counter if you want to